Hello, and welcome to this special CUBE presentation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE here in our Palo Alto studios for the Google Cloud Marketplace Marvel series. We've got two great guests here, CUBE alumni, Stephen Orban, Vice President of Migra Migrations, ISVs and Marketplace for Google Cloud, and Ken Exner, Chief Product Officer for Elastic. Jens, great to see you. Good to see you, John. Stephen, Google's a lot of cloud momentum, showing tons of momentum. We saw that at Google Next. How are you today thinking about the Marketplace? What's going on? John, maybe before we go, I'll just give a couple of uh, words on uh, how Google thinks about the marketplace and, and, and also thank Ken for being the first to go on this Marketplace Marvel series. Of course, John, thank you as always for hosting. You know, it's a super exciting time for Google Cloud and an exciting time specifically for our marketplace as we continue to see significant growth for ISVs, the software companies we partner with, who really lean in and make marketplace their default way to meet customers where they are on their journey with GCP. And as more and more large customers like Home Depot, Goldman Sachs, and Mayo Clinic make significant moves to Google Cloud, our backlog of committed spend has grown to more than 70 billion. Now customers have two ways to satisfy those commitments. One, by consuming Google Cloud products, or two, by consuming one of the thousands of ISVs on our marketplace. <clears throat> and as we've added more and more capabilities for ISVs to find and reach customers, including selling alongside them, like we do with Elastic with our field teams, and we recently added support for customers to buy from the reseller of their choice, we're finding that customers actually migrate faster when they buy from the right ISVs at the right time, and ISVs can close larger deals faster and more often. But at the same time, growing with the marketplace is just like many things in life and in business, you get what you put into it. So we started this series, and Ken, thanks again for being the first to do this with us, really to shine a light on what some of the ISVs who do this really well, how they've done it, both to help our customers understand why Elastic is such a great partner and to help other ISVs achieve the same levels of success. So you'll hear from Ken um, on how Elastic has leaned in on all of the three necessary components of a, success, of a successful partnership with us on Marketplace. One, they build unique solutions that customers can only find on GCP. Two, they market it well to their customers and the right places of their product experience. And three, they engage in a deep co-sell relationship where our field teams work closely together to make sure we're solving our customers' toughest problems together. Ken, how have you guys been able to grow your business with the, with the marketplace and, and increase your go-to-market speed? What's been the secret? Yeah, um, so Elastic began as uh, self-managed software. And as we moved to the cloud to offer a managed version uh, of our uh, of our offering. Of course, Google was uh, one of our CSPs that we wanted to grow with. Um, and initially we, we started a direct to customer uh, sales motion where we would directly sell to customers. As we added Marketplace, we realized that there were a ton of benefits from Marketplace. Uh, so we started selling Marketplace as well as direct on GCP. But what we realized is that when customers were using uh, a Marketplace uh, sales motion, one, there was less friction in the in the process. We didn't they didn't have to go through procurement. They they could immediately start using Elastic on GCP. So this meant less friction. This meant uh, greater overall consumption of Elastic. So we started seeing that this was actually a better avenue for us. So we actually started promoting uh, a marketplace based. Uh, uh, sales of, of Elastic uh, Cloud, because customers were going to spend more, they're going to have less friction, it was a better experience. Uh, so we did a few things. One is we changed our pricing so that it didn't advantage us. It would be the same whether you're coming through Marketplace or directly through through Elastic. And the second is we changed our onboarding experience so that when you when we sign people up or when we when we log them in, we put GCP uh, Marketplace right there next to our direct uh, channel. So we're promoting that avenue just as much as our own. And today, I think 75% of our GCP uh, cloud business comes from Marketplace. So it's been phenomenal for us. And I think that's why we've won uh, Google uh, Cloud uh, Partner of the Year four times in a row. Four times in a row, is that right, Stephen? Four times in a row? Four times in a row. It's among the reasons, Ken. Those are some definite best practices, but you've also got some yeah. awesome integrations with us as well. It's, a, it's quite a marvel, I must say. Um, glad, glad we named it the Marvel series. No, this, in all seriousness, I think that's a great point. No conflict, seamless buying. Great go-to-market benefits. That's awesome, congratulations. Love the marketplace formulas. It's like direct, the internet's all about. So congratulations on that and congratulations on the award. Um, let's get into the product. The partnership between Google Cloud and Elastic, Stephen, you also mentioned up front, 
has yielded a lot of significant product integrations and technology innovations that's unique to GCP and also for Elastic, search, observability, security. Can you guys share and discuss the integrations and what you guys have done together? Uh, so, you know, Elastic is used to, to search and index and find information and analytics and data. So that means that we need to support all the different data stores uh, in GCP. So for a long time, we've had integrations with Google Cloud Storage, with BigQuery, with PubSub, with Dataflow, a bunch of integrations, connectors to, to uh, GCP services so that customers can, can index that data and get value through Elastic. Um, I think some of the more interesting stuff is what's happening lately, though, with generative AI, where people who use Elastic for generative AI use it as a, as a bridge to LLMs for, for their private data. They have a bunch of private data. They want to they wanna connect that to an LLM. And what they do is they use Elastic to do that. So if they're wanting to uh, ground an LLM on private data, they typically, it's a search problem. They, they want to search for the most relevant content and then pass it to an LLM. Uh, and what Elastic does is it integrates with Google in a couple of different places here. A uh, typical workflow is you want to ingest data, you want to run inference on that data, uh, store um, that the, the embeddings in a vector database, in this case, Elasticsearch, uh, and then run retrieval and then pass context, context to an LLM. Well, in the inference part of this, we not only support our in, own inference models, right? we support uh, uh, Vertex AI uh, in, uh, embeddings creation services so that you can do that directly from uh, the inference API in Elastic. And we support uh, you know, passing context to an LLM at the end of that workflow, in this case, Gemini Pro. So you can use Elastic together with the, the best uh, in generative AI uh, at Google to create a complete workflow for grounding and building uh, an LLM uh, based application uh, on top of Google and Elastic. What about security? That's a big point, you just brought that up. People have their own data. That's been the number one focus for enterprise AI is going beyond the chatbot, but really making the private data valuable. Is, does Vertex yeah, help well, there? Uh, well, for a number of reasons. One is, uh, you know, a typical SOC, a typical uh, security operations center is going to have a number of different tools for threat hunting. Uh, and a very popular combination is using Elastic together with Chronicle, together with Mandian. Chronicle, out of the box, integrates with Elastic. Elastic, out of the box, integrates uh, with um, uh, uh, Mandian threat intelligence. So modern day SOC is going to have the best of those com those combinations for doing threat hunting. Um, but what we've done in Elastic is we've also built various AI capabilities on top of Gemini and Vertex AI that help to automate some of the capabilities of the typical modern day SOC. So not just AI assistance, but, but entire capabilities of uh, automated threat detection. So we have a, a new feature called uh, attack discovery, for example, that is built on top of uh, the power of Gemini that allows uh, a typical secu security analyst to, to look at all the uh, different alerts that they're getting and map that to an attack chain. So the modern day SOC is 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 improved. The information that they have is automated by the combination of Elastic and and Google. Talk about the observability aspect. People want real time uh, data in real time. It's been a big part of making generative AI work. Is if you don't have the data, that AI doesn't really work well. Talk about the real time aspect for observability. Well, of course. So uh, if you want uh, a real time, when you do when you're thinking about observability, you need to know about things the second they happen. So if you have, a, if you have a, some kind of uh, operational issue, you want to get alerted very quickly, and you want to have th uh, anomaly detection that runs to find things that you can't uh, necessarily uh, uh, predefine uh, as an alert. So the combination of predefined alerts together with anomaly detection based on generative AI and ML models uh, will allow the uh, operations uh, analysts to, to get the best of both worlds, things that they define as well as things that are driven by AI to help them be, be, be uh, uh, alerted of things uh, as they happen. And then because of the integrations that we have with Gemini, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, LLMs, we can start automating the remediation flow. So you can automate uh, the runbooks that uh, are, are, are used by operators to remediate issues. Uh, and this is because they, we have the context of, of their operating environment. We have information uh, about what went wrong and we have the power of LLMs, in this case, Gemini, to automate uh, the uh, production of a runbook for how to remediate an issue. You know, enterprise is looking to unlock value with data. That's the key part of the, the piece here. You mentioned security, that's obvious. That's, that's mission critical. But data first strategy is becoming something important and developer 
developers are a big part of it. Can you guys talk about the developer impact of the integrations? Because at the end of the day, developers want to go faster. They want faster applications. The search is critical for them. Having scalability is all going to be key. How do you guys talk to the developers? Ken, you want to start? I'll, I'll, <laughs> sure. I'll that. Um, uh, so yeah, Elastic uh, has always been developer first. Like we love developers. We were built as a platform for developers. Uh, our APIs uh, for search and for analytics have been loved by developers for years. Uh, we we have uh, you know conferences where we bring developers together to talk about the things that they build on top of Elastic. The, the thing about Elastic is. Uh, it's not just a search engine, it's a search AI platform. And what I mean by that is it's a platform for building development, for building uh, for building applications. Uh, if you think about, like we started off as you know a way for you to integrate search into a website or into a product. But as people started realizing the, the power of search and search AI, they realized that you can build financial analytics uh, uh, applications on top of it. They realized that you could build ride-sharing applications on top of it. So like when you search for a, a car, you're using you're using search. When you, um, you know, do uh, matchmaking search sites, any of these things are actually search applications. Uh, so the, you know, people were able to build completely new novel uh, applications based on the power of search and search AI. Uh, uh, the, the thing I would add to that, Ken is, you know, we share at Google Cloud a, a love for developers and, and specifically trying to meet them where they are. And I think one of the reasons that we find developers like Elastic on Google Cloud so much is because of how many unique and expansive integrations you've done. I mean, you just talked about a couple where you're integrating with Vertex, where Elastic can be a data source, where the search and observability helps across our security command center and our Mandiant products. You've got a number of integrations into BigQuery. These are all reasons why developers choose Google Cloud and the fact that Elastic, despite also being a, a multi-cloud product, you, you offer your services anywhere the customer wants, just like we want to have uh, any ISV that the customer wants on our, on our service. You're still making a bunch of those unique integrations that provides the developer faster time to product and time to value um, in a way that really makes both Elastic and, and Google Cloud, Cloud shine together in unique ways. That's awesome, guys. So congratulations on the partnership. I got to ask the question that everyone wants to know is, what's the unique value from this combined relationship for your customers? I'll start. So um, yeah, every customer has a big data problem. Uh, every customer that we have in common has tons of data that's being emitted by their operating environment, that's being emitted by their applications. Uh, and the combination of uh, Google's uh, data processing and storage together with Elastic's search and analytics and AI capabilities create a, a powerful way to, to sift through all that data to get to, to, to insights and to get to actionable, um, uh, to get to things that they can action on. So I think every single one of these use cases that we have in common is, is a big data problem where a customer wants to, to, to get through data uh, based on stuff that's uh, being hosted and processed by uh, GCP and analyzed by Elastic. Um, but uh, there are some very common use cases uh, that we see across our customers for building uh, search applications on top of GCP uh, or building AI applications. And I think these are the ones I'm really excited about where uh, customers are starting to you know, leverage Elastic uh, to uh, do semantic search on top of GCP or they're using Elastic to do ver uh, vector search and, and start grounding LLMs uh, on, on their private data. Uh, it's really exciting to see uh, how many customers are starting to take advantage of these capabilities that the two companies uh, provide uh, in, in common in, the, in these uh, joint solutions. Steven, you know, last has been a great product. It's been, you know, from the beginning, go back a decade plus. I mean, it was really the product. If you were doing anything in, uh, in hyperscale development, Elastic was the key product. Data is now more important than ever. And integrations, we were just talking about earlier, has become a big part of the generative AI wave. People need to integrate models, foundation models, also data sets, unstructured and hybrid. So it's a big part of the new equation, continues to be important, but it's changing. You got neural networks, as you mentioned, vector databases and tokens. You know, RAG is a popular application. You're starting to see a lot more computer vision a lot more new things, it's a net new category emerging. So how does that change the, um, the integrations and how does marketplace evolve? And, and Elastic too is in the middle of it. Yeah, so it's it's a great question, John. And, and I think just to double down on the uniqueness that Elastic provides, that there's no other ISV that I can think of, no other software company who, who handles all of search observability and security kind of all in one wrapped up offering that is also uniquely integrated into so many of our different 
service lines. And when you talk about data and how that's, uh, what the impact uh, of that is into customers' Gen AI pursuits, look, the, the models that we make available are, are great, but they're, own, they're, they're currently trained on publicly available data. So the customers who are doing unique things with their Gen AI capabilities, whether they're putting chatbots that are trained on their own you know, customer service data or whatever the case may be, they need to be either tuned or uh, augmented using, let's say, re re retrieval augmented generation with data that they own and their own private corpuses of data. And oftentimes, mm -hmm. customers are already using Elastic as that just as the, as the storage layer for that um, uh, for that corpus of data. So some of the things that we're doing around Vertex are really helping accelerate some of our customers' Gen AI, both proof of concepts and then ultimately getting them to production faster because we're able to collectively meet the customers where they are. Ken and the Elastic yeah. team with the search and the, the, the data storage and then uh, Google Cloud with the models, whether it be Gemini and, and our platform Vertex together is like peanut butter and jelly. Ken, you got to love the market. I mean, Elastic's been in the search business, you pointed out clearly, but now the whole rag or retrieval augmentation generator, that's essentially search, it's retrieving. And so now you have generative AI, which, which needs a scalable search function, basically, if I'm oversimplifying it, but the whole world has gone a search kind of as a layer. This is now standard for all Gen AI applications. So you guys got to be pretty excited over there and thinking, well, the data is also there too. You had the data in your platform. Well, you guys are well positioned for this big wave. Yeah, we, um, we're, we're totally excited about uh, the opportunity ahead of us and uh, what customers can do with uh, uh, Elastic uh, as a bridge to, to generative AI. We actually found ourselves uh, in a position in the position to be a, a part of the modern generative AI, generative AI tech stack because of investments that we made a long time ago. So we, we of course, started as lexical search or text-based search, mm -hmm. but as uh, customers wanted to start doing semantic search, yeah. uh, natural language question answering, uh, or, or or image search. Uh, we needed to start uh, supporting vector embedding, so being able to yeah. uh, to, to generate and query uh, uh, vectors, uh, and that sort of positioned us to to be a solution for RAG uh, these days. So we, we actually supported uh, vector embeddings and uh, and vector search uh, in 2019. So more than more than five years ago, we were we were starting to do yeah. this already. Yeah, you got. Uh, it. Yeah. So today, customers have been indexing their data with Elastic. Yeah. They already work with us and they can start passing uh, context to an LLM with the solution they already have. You guys nailed the developer experience. Like, not to, not to uh, pat ourselves on the back of the cube here, but we've been a customer since 2012 when we started indexing all of our content. Elastic was our first solution, we never left. So you guys got a great product. Anyone doing horizontally scalable cloud data pretty much has used Elastic or uses it. So um, really well positioned. Let's get into the customer uh, benefits now because now the proof is who's using the, the product. What's the new use cases? Can you share the customer success story? You guys have Cisco as a customer success story. Take us through that. Yeah, we, uh, Steve and I were talking about Cisco earlier. Uh, great, great example. It's a customer of GCP and Elastic. Uh, they run all their infrastructure on GCP. Um, they use us actually for a number of different search use cases. You know, their uh, Cisco.com uses us for their search, uh, search on their website. They also use us for their internal search on their intranet, sort of a workplace search uh, uh, use case. Uh, and they also use us uh, as part of their support uh, center in empowering search for uh, um, support engineers who are trying to answer cases. Um, and I think the interesting thing about what they've done is that they've grown with us. So they started off doing text-based search, and then as we in introduced semantic search, they added uh, semantic search so they could do natural language processing. Then they, you know, as models came about uh, where they could start automating uh, the creation of answers, they started adopting that from Elastic. So they, they do natural language question answering, and they, they actually today implement something, uh, a form of hybrid search where they do a combination of different techniques where they can suggest answers uh, or um, you know, point people to specific um, uh, pages where they can get more information. Uh, they, they've rolled this out across all their, the different uh, uh, search use cases, and they've had phenomenal results. I, I hear that they believe that they're saving about 5,000 support engineer hours every month uh, because customers are able to find information themselves or the support engineers are able to find information faster. So they've had phenomenal uh, results using 
uh, Elastic to, to Power Search, but using us together with Google uh, to provide generative AI-based answers. So did they bring the data sets together? Were they siloed? Did they unify them? What was the key um, problem? And then did it match up on the performance side? Can you guys talk about that specific aspect of it? Uh, so yeah, they have a, a number of different silos. If, if you think about like an internal uh, knowledge base, they, they they have various wikis, they have various uh, you know different uh, tools that they use for uh, ticketing and for uh, all kinds of different uh, uh, silos of information internally, but also in, in terms of support. And the support workers uh, need to reference data that lives in, in in dozens, if not hundreds, of different places. So what we do together with with Google is index all that information. Uh, combine it with the power of LLMs to help provide summarized uh, answers uh, and then point them to the reference documents. So we, we ground the answers based on the, the documents they have that are distributed across the, uh, uh, across the entire uh, Cisco network and, uh, and then provide them uh, a simple answer that they that, that, that can then you know, point to the underlying reference documents. Uh, so it, it's a powerful use case that has saved them a ton of, of time and, and, and resources. How's the performance on the on the queries, latency? Can you share some stats on performance? Well, well, you know Elastic. We 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 we're, we're known for our speed and performance. <laughs> yes, Late, that's for sure. If you're if you're talking about search these days, it has to be fast enough to do auto completion, right? So what 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 they've done, they've actually implemented auto completion. So as you're typing. Yeah. It starts to autocomplete answers in this hybrid search, uh, in, uh, uh, hybrid search fashion. So it, it's fast enough where it is doing it as autocomplete. Yeah, and that is, by well, the way, generative AI is all about completing the next sentence, right? That's runtime. That's the kind of speed you need. Awesome, Stephen. You want to weigh in? Yeah. The only thing I would add to what Ken said is just he kind of walked through it. It was like a growth motion where Cisco started with one or two use cases and then kind of expanded into adjacent areas because they continued to see increasing value, performance, speed, uh, et cetera. It also lends itself really well, that type of motion to what we try to do with our marketplace, where there's a very easy sort of low cost way to get started that's frictionless, that just shows up on Cisco's bill. It automatically complements whatever they're doing, uh, what they were already doing with Google Cloud, where they, where they host the rest of the adjacent workloads. And then over time, it's a great forcing function for our account teams to really get to know one another better, which they did in this case, and grew with Cisco over a longer period of time. So I think in addition to it being a great technical win and, and driving a bunch of product value for, uh, for Cisco, it was just a, a great way for our teams to, to, to work together and really understand what Cisco's pain points were so that we could both bring our respective best of breed technology and capabilities to the table. What I love about the cloud next gen, and certainly with generative AI on the corner, data is the center of the value proposition. It's got to be large scale, horizontally scalable, vertically specialized. The application is going to get the developers in line with that. Data is now moving up the stack big time. Uh, so I want to ask you guys both to wrap up here. What's special about integrations with this with cloud and, and ISVs? Ken, you're, you're the customer. Um, in the marketplace, you're moving a lot of product, even sales are up. Steven, you're enabling a marketplace. What makes this time so special for the folks watching out there saying, hey, you know what? What can I do different? I just don't want to lift and shift and be in a catalog and, and move product. What can I do to make my business better? What do you guys offer, Steven? And then, Ken, how would you talk to a, a colleague and saying, hey, this is a good, good deal? Yeah, John, thanks for the question. I think it's a super exciting time uh, to be in tech and working with Elastic in particular, because generative AI is going to make way to so many use cases we haven't even thought of yet, but also automate a lot of existing um, things today, whether it be uh, customer service or summarizing documents or generating code or images or marketing campaigns. And I think the unique set of capabilities that Elastic has built with us over the years, not just in our generative AI platform with Vertex and Gemini, like Ken was talking about, but also access to BigQuery as a data store and then securing things through Mandiant uh, and the like, really position as well to help customers not just identify those use cases, but implement them very quickly. Ken, what's your, what's your take uh, as you look at the, the product opportunities to innovate and other peers out there thinking, scratching their heads, trying to put this puzzle together as well, what would make them a marvel? Well, I think um, one of the things that we've been uh, seeing in the industry for a while is, you know, how do you deal with all this data? And typically, people have been trying to reduce the number, the amount of data that they have. And I think what's different these days is that it's okay to have all that data, 
um, if you can search through it and, and parse it and then pass it to an LLM and have an LLM help you uh, get answers out of it and process it. Actually, the more data, the better. And that's kind of a new thing that we have, we're, we're, we're realizing. When you're thinking about uh, you know, if you're securing your, 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 in, your enterprise, for example, you don't want to you know, reduce the amount of data and, and then try to process that. Just take all the data <laughs> uh, and then work with Elastic to, to, to you know, find the right context out of that data and then pass it to an LLM. Um, so we're, I don't think, I think the, the, the thing, the situation has changed where the more data, the better, not the worse. Like it's okay to have a lot of data and just use the combination of GCP and Elastic uh, to help you get uh, answers and actionable inside that of that. You know, I think that's a great point. And I think the neural network infrastructure, you mentioned vectors before, will allow you to get billions and billions of more data points and retrieve that in real time. You got to have the cloud capabilities, you got to have those agents, you got to have the APIs. And really it's a whole unique time, Stephen. This is a unique, this isn't just, you know, host on the cloud. This is what Ken was getting at is that more data is the better because you feed the AI, it gets more intelligent. That next level is all about a new kind of infrastructure. That's right. And then you need the cloud to be able to scale all of that, both that data and the computing resources around it. So it's a super exciting time. Stephen, Ken, thanks for coming on this uh, series. What's next? Ken, what's next for you? Steve, what's next for you? Ken, we'll start with you. What's next? Uh, what's Well, we're continuing to uh, work on relevance uh, at, at Elastic. I think so much of um, the, the RAG discussion has been around performance and, and uh, capabilities around RAG. I think that the secret is actually relevance because if you want to pass context to an LLM, you want the most relevant information because that that uh, generative AI application is going to answer something. Uh, it's going to give you one answer. So you want that one answer to be right, uh, which means that you have to have the most relevant grounding. So we're working on a number of techniques, whether it's re-ranking, whether it's uh, query rewriting to provide additional capabilities for developers to tune relevance because relevance is what matters when you're trying to find the best information. So look for, uh, I look forward to yeah. coming back and talk about what we're doing there. I can't wait. Reasoning, relevance, value. Steve, what's next for, for you in the marketplace? What's going on? So as fast as our marketplace has grown over the last couple of years and as fast as it's grown with Elastic specifically, I still think we have an opportunity to make sure that we're presenting Elastic and partners like them in the contextually relevant spaces across GCP yeah. so that we can make sure we're, we're presenting them to the developer community and to the customer uh, when it's contextually relevant for them. So Ken talked about some of the integrations that we've done already. Yeah. But I think there's more that we can do uh, specifically to make sure when a customer is starting to build or train a model, they could discover an elastic data source that they're already running in GCP without necessarily ha having to, to leave the experience that, that they're in. We, we, we've started that integration already by uh, Elastic working with us and, and training our Gemini code assist with uh, elastic specific data. So our models are smart on how developers use elastic, but there's a lot more that we can and will be doing. Um, as the future unfolds. Steve and Ken, thanks for coming on this Marvel series, Cloud Marketplace Marvels. Looking forward to it. It's got a great time right now to innovate with integrations and data. Again, next level is just scratching the surface. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, John. Okay, Google thanks. Cloud Marketplace Marvels series. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.